Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, I want to go over collaboration settings, work sets, and synchronizing. Now, most of you probably aren't familiar with those features, or how they incorporate into Revit, but this is one of the main advantages that Revit has to offer. And the reason for that is, even though you might have been using AutoCAD, or other drafting programs or methods, most people can't occupy the same drawing at the same time. In Revit, though, you can actually use the same model at the same time. That makes your whole team more efficient, because you can all get work done simultaneously. So what I'm going to do for this lesson is go into the Sample Architecture project. Now this is a normal Revit file, but we're going to convert it into a collaboration file. This is also known as a central file but we'll get into that a little bit later in the course. So I've opened up our basic project, and now again, we have our level one, and it has all different items, whether that be elevation tags, section tags, just a standard project. Now if you go up to the Collaborate tab, you'll see a lot of the options are grayed out right now, and that's because we haven't enabled work sets. Now work sets, they basically are just a group of different layers that are to be set up. Now keep in mind that even though this project has already been started, and several elements of it haven't been labeled under work sets yet, each project may have different types of work sets. This could be level 1, level 2, level 3. And so you might want to split up your levels based on your work sets. You might do it based on item types. So you could theoretically have a stairs work set. You could have a furniture work set. And all of these work sets can be turned off and manipulated later on, which can make the borrowing and usage transfer that much easier. But we'll get into that more later on. Now you'll notice this window. It says you're about to enable work sharing. Sharing a project requires careful planning and management. Click OK to enable work sharing or cancel to return to your project without enabling work sharing. This is just a basic warning that in summary is telling you that you should be coordinating with your team before any of you get into your work files, because you don't want everyone going in there uncoordinated and risking corrupting the work files. And you also want to coordinate who's working on what task. Now fortunately, most prompts like this and issues that pop up in Revit won't actually corrupt any files. But you'll have to be very careful to always make sure that you're synchronizing to a central file which most likely will be on a network drive when you're actually working with your team. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK now. Everything looks good, we're moving our shared levels and grids, and we're going to move pretty much everything here to work set 1. So when I actually hit OK, you'll notice that it takes a couple of seconds for everything to process. Alright, once it gets done loading, you'll see that we have our work set, and we have ownership, we have editability, who's opened it, and who's visible. Now all this is based on your active work sets. Now you can always create a new work set anytime you want to. Just click the new icon in the upper right hand corner and then type in the new name. So for this example I will call this work set level 2 and you can change the editability whether you want the owner that you have specified to be able to change it. You can also specify under the Show panel what the user is able to see and manipulate, whether that's families, views, or project standards. So you have the ability to specify what exactly people get to see, and what they can change of what they can see. Now most teams don't really change these settings. And the reason for that is, unless you want to make sure that someone cannot touch something, and in that case you are able to disable their access, most of the time it's best to have all team members able to have full control and access to the model. So at this point, I'll hit OK, and you'll see this notice pop up, asking if I want to make the level 2 work set the active work set. For this example, I'm just going to click No, because I want my active work set to be shared levels and grids. Now you can always change this, but keep in mind that whatever you build will also be on that work set. So for instance, this wall, when we highlight it, is already on work set 1. So you can control what items go on what work sets, which also gives you the ability to turn them off and on. 
and this will make your file management that much easier. Now right now, you'll see that we can't synchronize with the central file, nor can we reload the latest yet. Right now though, you can relinquish all your elements, show history, restore a backup, and edit requests, which we'll cover in the next lesson. You can also copy and monitor, perform a coordination review, all different coordination settings that you now have access to. So at this point, what I'm going to do is actually save this file for the very first time as a collaboration file. So I'm going to go up to the Start menu and select Save As. I'm going to choose to save it to my desktop. And now if you go into the Options setting, you'll see that because this is the first time that you've saved it, you're not able to disable the Make This a Central Model After Save option. So again, to get into this menu, click Options next to the file name, and you'll see that there's a compact file, what you want the default to open as, and the thumbnail preview. Now at the top of this menu, you'll see Maximum Backups. Now this is based on journals, which is something we'll cover a little bit later on. Now although it's 20 right now, if you're working on a big team, you may want to expand it all the way up to 100. And all these are are just records of the changes that have been made to your model. So once you're satisfied with all your different options, we'll go back and we'll save this file now. And I'm going to call it Central File Test. Alright, and once that's done I'll hit Save. And you'll be able to see in the lower left hand corner the progress of the save. Be patient, it may take a while. Alright, now at this point you can see that Synchronize with Central File option is accessible. Now a lot of time when I save this for the first time as a central file, I like to make sure that I'm not actually in the central file. Alright, so understand now at this point, and we'll go over the review in the next lesson. There will be a local file saved to your computer, and you'll work on that wherever you're located. And then there will be a central file that will be controlled by your firm and kept on a server that will monitor the changes made to the local file. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and close this out, and then I'm going to open it back up. And you'll notice here too that our file has created a test backup on the desktop, so it's already begun creating backup files. And so now I'm ready to open the file. I'm going to do that by selecting the open icon. Don't necessarily just open the file from the home page, because when you navigate to it from the open window, you want to always make sure that you're creating a new local file. If you choose Detach from Central File and try to save later, while your other team members are trying to work on the central file at the same time, you may find that you'll crash the entire Revit file, or even worse, you might lose a huge amount of work. The reason for that is because that central file is constantly monitoring all the local files to see who has what objects and the like. If you try to detach it from the central file and then save it, a good analogy would be it's like taking an apple off the table without telling anyone about it. And because you've moved it, your teammates aren't aware of that, so it can lead to conflicts of information and general problems with collaboration. So just be aware that you always want to create a new local file. You can also choose to audit, which gets rid of a lot of elements and just cleans up your file, but that's optional. So once you're ready, you can click open. Now again, like everything with collaboration, it'll take a little bit longer since it's working through more stuff. But once it loads, you'll see the synchronize and modify settings icon in the quick access toolbar. And you can also synchronize with a central point from the collaborate tab. Synchronize means that you're basically uploading your changes to that central file. So even though you may be working on a local computer, as long as you upload that information to the central file, you'll always be able to pull a backup. So at any given time, you should have two backups available to you. The local file that you're working on on your personal computer, and the central file, which should be stored on your firm's server. Now you can change your modify settings, you can compact it or adjust different settings. Now keep in mind, since we're working on a collaboration project, for my example, synchronizing is actually more important than saving, because saving will only save your local file to your computer, whereas synchronizing will save it on the local file and to the central file. 
it creates two backups at once. Now depending on file size, this may take a while. So because of that, when you're working on a collaboration project, you don't want to be synchronizing every five minutes. That'll waste time, and it'll be very daunting for you and your fellow users. You also want to try and coordinate so that two people aren't synchronizing at the same time. If two people are trying to synchronize or save at the same time, it can dramatically increase the time that it takes overall. If you find that you're having problems with synchronizing, one good solution is to go to the Start menu and then save your file as a new local file. But we'll deal with that more as we continue on in the course. Alright, thank you very much, and continue on to the next video.